in it and uh, trying to get that top eight for Sadisi Whip. So this is a deck that's built around the graveyard synergies of commune with the gods and, and so forth to mm -hmm. facilitate Sadisi and Whip of Erebos? Yeah, we are, well, it, Sadisi kind of playing the role of both enabler and payoff in its own right. But uh, yeah, we're, we're basically just trying to fill the graveyard up and uh, get some giant night howlers and some cheap nemesis, nemeses of mortals and a bunch of zombie tokens. So R&D has got pushier over the years with kind of innocuous life gaining, which is nice. People like to gain life. It feels yep. good. Uh, unfortunate consequence of Whoa. that is sometimes life tolls are 51 to 42 <laughs> as we enter <laughs> minute 35 of game one. All right. Okay. So what, what, are, what are the culprits here? Of course, we, we have a we have, we have a Veribos, uh down there south on uh, Joseph's board. We have an 11-11 Night Howler and, a, uh, of course, a 5-5. Uh, Nylea that can can, can grow. Uh, so I see how Joseph has gained all this life. What, what's Pat been up to? It's probably we made rock and siege rhinos. I would guess we made rock is probably the big culprit. Sure. This is uh this reminds me of uh, standard from two seasons ago, where with the whole Thrag Tusk Resto Angel. Uh, this is duo, this is an even more extreme version of that. Yeah. I mean, 66 to 37, 52 to 48. These are not life holes we saw really even in Thry Tusk mirrors. Well, it, yeah, occasionally, but yeah. It, the life holes just start at 20 and immediately start going up, it seems. Uh, so the real question is, like, what, what, what end game are you playing for at this stage? If you're, if you're in Pat's seat, I, I think possibly decking. Right. Yeah, I, I'm curious what the, the actual count is for Joseph. Like, what... I, I see a CDC in a graveyard there. Yeah, there's a there's a commune with the uh, with the gods that's been cast. So pretty likely, actually, that Joseph is down into like the teens in terms of library count. Keep in mind he has a Nylea in play, so that's giving all of his creatures trample, mm -hmm. puts a lot of pressure on Pat to block, uh, you know, every turn and block correctly. Yeah. Place main line on the ground does a lot of good work, but with things like Night Howler, Nemesis Immortals, Joseph still might be able to overpower all of this. Yeah. And, actually, and I'm looking at Pat's board now. Just I'm, I'm just want to confirm all those creatures are in play, right? All those yes. the, the Death Dealers up there and the Rhino. That's not like a an overflowing graveyard or something. Okay. Yeah, that looks like yeah. a yeah. That's those are all in play. That's yeah. the blocking squad, I think. Yep. Arrow Wilds gonna show up thanks to uh, to Will Erebos. The old Death Touch Trample connection. That, it's that's, a combo. Yeah. Would be more helpful if your opponent wasn't at 41, but. Uh, <laughs> You start where you can start, you know? Yeah, fair enough. So Rome was not built in a day. True. Nor, nor do 41 points of life evaporate in one combat step. Uh, so, those are the guys coming in. Uh, I guess that nemesis is just a 5-5 right now. Okay, but not for long. It is getting, getting monstrous into 10-10 with Trample, thanks to the Nylea. So, the... The Fleece Main is going to fog one of those points from the air. So currently two incoming, you know, over the Fleece Main, thanks to Air of the Wilds. Uh, Nylea does not give herself trample. So, so the, uh, the Rakshasa Death Dealer down there, uh, you know, as it regenerates, is going to prevent the full five there. And currently we got a lot of damage coming over the top of this other Air of the Wilds. Yeah, this looks like eight plus whatever Nylea pumps are going on on top. Yeah which will knock Pat down to 33. Yeah. Rome wasn't built in a day, but Joseph might be able to build it in a week. Well, like, I don't know if he has a week. I mean, he didn't cast the Commune with the Gods, which to me is an indication that his, his library might be getting really lean. Yeah, I agree. If he it, can't afford to cast that card with a whip in play, <laughs> sure. probably it, in some trouble. And at this stage, I'm not even sure which pile is his library. It's the... Uh, okay, the, the, well, the one that, I, that he just put that thing into, so I thought it was his graveyard. I guess it's... I, Keep in mind, he's also not whipping back Sadisi, which is, generally speaking, a juicy whip target. Yeah. What, okay, seriously, no, where, where is his library? Where, which one is it? I can't even tell. Well, I, he has a Corsair in play. Right, so it's going to be the, one with it's a... The, it's the one with Whip of Erebos on the top, Okay. I believe. All right. All right. Well, that one ha at least has a, has a spell in it, so yeah. it is not a zero. And Pagana... Gonna crack in with his wingmate rock and friends. And that is a, let's see, that's just four life, right? Yeah, that's, 
Just, yeah, just some flyers. No, nothing and, fancy, just an attack yeah. for t 10, it looks like. Yeah, I was having to review, like, are any of those, uh, those are at one rock and two tokens. And then the uh, the Tom Ross vampire token does not itself have life links. So, yeah, just four life. And Pat looks like picking up the deck to do a quick count. See how much is left. Again, I suspect very little. Yeah. Yeah, that looked like maybe five seven. or six. Yeah. Yeah, seven. Got it on the eyeball. Not bad. Yep. All right. I was going to say five or six, so I'm not so powerful a wizard. Well, there's there's certain skills that are good to have in in magic and being able to quickly identify how many <laughs> cards are. It's yeah. not that practical. In a stack of cards, yeah, it's not generally. That yeah. Not that practical, but I have some sure. experience. Yeah, fair enough. And so Joseph begins to turn. Now, seven feels like so many at this point, too. Um, well, uh, I mean, Pat's got this pretty clogged up, and I think that Joseph is running out of viable whip targets because the Sadisis are sort of off the table right now. That's fair. Okay, and it was it was Air of the Wilds that came back last time. So it looks like just these two. I interesting, Joseph is not uh, not attacking with any of his little guys. Yeah, he does have Nylea. He could pump them up. Uh, you know, at least twice, twice with his lands. And then a third time, I think, with those two Elvish Mystics, so. Yeah, potentially he has more attacks afforded to him than he's really capitalizing on. Yeah. Now, one swing, I mean, you could maybe attack with just one and see what happens. Um, you, you, you obviously can't pump them all. So if you just kind of swing with the whole, the whole squad, you'd lose a lot to these random clunkers that just happen to be sitting there, like that Siege Rhino. But as it stands, he's just going to attack with Nylea and the Nemesis Immortals. So we're going to see some pumps and regeneration, most likely. All Pat has to concern himself with right now is preventing as much damage as coming through as possible. Because mm -hmm. inevitability is on his side right now. Yeah, th this is such a bizarre, like, mode to be in. It's like, well, can I... Can I gain... Gaining for a turn, can I keep myself from taking 35 points of damage for six... For seven, I guess, seven turns. Plus, Pat has more draw steps, too. I mean, every Siege True. Rhino he finds, every Wingmate Rock especially, okay. might really cement this game. Yeah, fair. And, and, and Okay, I was about to ask, he might actually be making headway in the damage race as well. Uh, but he's not, it turns yeah, out. Yeah, Joseph has said 73. Yeah, so Joseph, a life total, actually just going up every turn that we've watched this game. Notably, that Nemesis Immortals did leave play. So we, we managed to trade off some, some blockers and actually get it into the, the graveyard where it's not gone for good. Oh, but. no, that's the exile pile. Oh. That's okay. from Whip. <laughs> okay, all right. it, The way that his board is laid out is very confusing because okay, right. yeah, yeah, okay. deck and then underneath deck is graveyard and then off to the side or gotcha. underneath all that is exile. But right now it's deck on the top, closest okay. to past deck, then exile zone, okay. then graveyard. So the, the Sadisi pile is the graveyard. Correct. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's right. We were watching him last round. Then he was keeping his exile, like, turn perpendicular to his graveyard just above it like that. So, of course, we're going to come off the top. Air of the Wilds gonna going to pop up there, let you know he's coming. And, yeah, does, does Joseph have any actual attackers left? This is rough because look at the clock. We're under eight minutes. Mm -hmm. If Joseph's playing out a hopeless game, he's possibly condemning himself to just a 1-0 loss. Because I don't get the vibe his deck can win that quickly. Yeah, well, I think the, the ship has sailed on, a, on, on finishing a match in this sense. I think this is definitely, this game is deciding the match one way or another, and I think both players know that. Yep. So, Joseph with the mana available here for three pumps. And is going to bring the pain with all of these little guys. I believe that is three Seder Wayfinders and a Courser of Prefix. And Pat considers his options. Looks like, okay, we're fanning him out to, to allow creatures to match up with creature. And Death Dealer gonna go in front of the Courser and it looks like one, one, one Wayfinder getting through the others blocked by Monstrous Fleece Main Lion and four, five Rhino. It doesn't seem like there's much merit to putting the Siege Rhino in front in my mind because Rakshasa Death Dealer and Fleece Main Lion both block cleanly yep. against these threats. So I think my preferred block, I think I might have preferred just putting the Fleece Main Lion in front of Nylea, put both Death Dealers in front of two of the tokens, okay. allow Joseph to pump however he wants to pump, but there's not a lot of productive to be done. Sure. This, 
basically allows Joseph to get the Siege Rhino off the table in a spot where I don't think Pat is making significantly more inroads blocking this way than just leaving the Siege Rhino back and yeah, trying to make inroads in the board with his death dealers. Yeah, I think I agree. I mean, he, he's basically cashing in his Siege Rhino f f like for its toughness. Correct. Which it's probably going to do eventually anyway. But uh, you might be able to like make Joseph's attacks a little more awkward in the meantime if you let it sit there. Uh, as it stands, he is going to... So did, did he pump and regenerate his death dealer? Yeah, it looks like he did. So, okay. So the, the Courser is going to go. Uh, one of the Wayfinders is going to go. The one that was blocked by Siege Rhino. Actually, yeah, okay, there he is. Yeah. Uh, looks like it, it was pumped to a 7-7. Seven, seven. So it is going to stay. And, and then, of course, the one that was not blocked at all is going to stick around as well. So... Joseph now down to two Elvish Mystics, two Seder Wayfinders, and the Nylea. And notably, this is, that's five green devotion. Yes. Joseph actually, if, if he loses another per green permanent, he, he is going to find that Air of the Wilds, although, the, which... I would imagine with Joseph's leftovers, the stuff in his graveyard, he could probably reassemble devotion on a turn-to-turn -turn basis. Yep. Even if he loses five devotion on the board. Yep. That, that air of the wilds, it shouldn't technically be revealed. It's one of those things where, like, since it was already revealed, there's not really any harm in leaving it there. There's also 30,000 things going on in this game, so yeah, some sure. things will get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. So anyway, we knew it was coming, uh, but it is going to provide a, a sixth devotion such that, you know, Joseph can lose something yeah. and still have his 5-5. Five five. But this board looks a lot cleaner, honestly, than it did when we found it. Yep. And... Uh, I, I'm liking Pat's spot more and more as the turns progress. I just don't... I, I think it's going to be a huge challenge for Joseph to be able to win the game, this game in time because Pat's defenses right now are so solid mm -hmm. that even this Nylea, absent of something like Nykthos or so, something like that, I just don't think he's going to be able to punch through in time. Yeah, he is going to... Well, all right. So, so I was counting up the devotion on board. Turns out Joseph just had a handful of, of little green duders. Uh, another re replacement course of Crufix, Reclamation Sage, which uh, is you know an, an optional trigger, so doesn't have to blow up that whip. And I believe it was another, well, the Air of the Wilds that he drew. Those, the, those are all joining the party this turn. The real important thing is a Night Howler on top of Joseph's deck. Mm -hmm. Although he has probably lost a fair amount of his graveyard to whip activations, I still have to imagine it's quite large. Uh, when we first came to the match, we were told that he had an 11-11 Night Howler. Uh, since then, he has whipped two things into play, and a couple of guys have died. Right. So, so we're probably at roughly the same size. Yeah. Uh, and what? And I'm trying to remember, does does Nylea give all of your creatures trample, or just the green ones? All creatures. All creatures. Okay. So 11, 11 Trampler, which is a much bigger deal. Yes. So Pat's going to add a pair of Heralds of Torment to the board and ship it back. And Joseph here, I don't even think can afford to put that opulent power in, pa palace in play because right now his his bottleneck is cards and library. Yeah, every every card that he draws is another you know turn off of his life basically. Yeah. And we we counted, we got seven. I want to say two turns have passed since then. So yeah, the the noose is is tightening. For Joseph. Though this is a really nice setup for here for Joseph here. He gets to put the Night Howler on Air of the Wilds. We know about the Death Touch plus Trample combo. This Air of the Wilds is huge. Yeah. Maybe this is a path to punch through. Okay, so currently a 13 13 Air of the Wilds. Um, we're not clear if that actually. It, that may be 13 13 on its own. That may be 13 13 plus one from the actual trigger. Mm hmm. I love that it triggers itself. Yeah, I believe so. So that means that he can block with the Fleece Main Line is four, six, eight, eleven, fourteen. He can put everything in front of the Air of the Wilds, but then the Nylea pumps yeah. play over the top. Mm -hmm. And just got clarification there, 13 creatures in the graveyard. So that is 2-2 two, two as a base stat, plus 13 from the, the Night Howler, plus another one from the, uh, the trigger when it attacks. So looking at 16 just incoming before Nylea's. It's a lot. Yeah. Of course, these 
these other little guys are rumbling in too. And those are basically just going to get eaten by these Heralds of Torment. But Rakshasa Death Dealer can block, can regenerate. That's still going to trample over 14. I love that trample over 14 is like... Okay, it, whatever. Yeah, yeah it's, in, it's, really, it's bad, but it's not like... Normally, if someone's trampling over 14, it's like, well, GG. But yep. in this case, Pat has some life, life points to work with still. But yeah, still very bad news for Pat. You see the clock now under a minute. Yeah, at, at this point, we may not see a, a game decided. And honestly, it, like I don't feel like these players have been playing slowly. This, no, is, this has just been a very complicated board. Given the complexity of the board, I think both players have been playing quite fast. Yeah. Yeah, I think jo Joseph is legitimately trying to like close out with damage, which he is a real thing he can do. And Pat's taking his turn and trying to keep his head above water. Yeah. And deck Joseph. Yeah. This, is, this must have been an exhausting game to have played from the beginning. Yes. These games, I mean, you know, games like this can be exhausting. I rarely play decks like this, so yeah. I haven't experienced much of this myself. But, And the thing is, any small little hiccup, especially once you start talking about things like Nylea granting, pumping things and granting trample, mm -hmm. and Pat can, this game can just slip away from Pat. Yeah. I think of all the decks I've played, the, the one that most that, that I would have most described as exhausting was actually Maverick and Legacy. Yes. The yeah. Maverick mirror is oh, excruciating. Yeah. yeah, I played one Grand Prix with Maverick where I got stuck in the draw bracket and then played Maverick mirrors four rounds in a row on day two. <laughs> that was the worst Grand Prix of my life. So Pac does have the abs and charm. He's going to take care of Nylea. Care of Nylea. That's a huge, yes, that, huge draw yeah, for That's Pat. big. And so, and now none of uh, none of Joseph's creatures have trample, so Pat safe to uh, to sit behind these regenerators. And that's all. There's only one Nylea in this list for Joseph. Yeah. So Pat no longer has to worry about that. Yeah. Only one in the main, zero in the side. So trample just not a problem anymore. And we did. We have reached zero. Uh, unclear if that is. Okay, so th th that is the that's the round clock for these players. They did not have any extensions past this, so we are in turn one of turns. So Joseph will get turns one, turns three, and turns five. Mm -hmm. And no profitable attacks again. With no trample, there's no really no reason to send in other than maybe to just to gain a bunch of life. But at 94, I think he's fine there. Probably safe from getting killed. Yeah, over yeah. two turns. Yeah, Pat's only going to have two combat steps. So even though he is going to get to fly over for 17, yeah, it, twice. It's nowhere like. even. It's no. not even. It's a negligible amount <laughs> of damage. Yeah. So that uh, currently 16 creatures in Joseph's graveyard. So an 1818 Air of the Wild is going to come in. 1919 because it it Did triggers. It, yeah. It actually. I'm not actually positive if it does count itself. It may say another creature, but sure. Uh, either way, we are, we're, we're putting the game just the same amount of out of reach it was before on damage, I think. Yeah, it would be weird for Air to say other because it, under normal circumstances, can't count itself. Sure. Okay. And, and it's also, I guess, the, the the stock wording for the ferocious mechanic. Yes. Since it is... Correct. Yeah, not, not keyword. Ability worded, I guess. Yeah. So it would be the same for everyone. See, look at that. Some R&D chops. Yeah, there Good we go. Uh, very nicely done. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, Pat, I think, you know, I kind of see this slipping out of reach. Just trying to figure out if it's worth trying to gain some life, but probably not. Yeah. I mean, again. So, he's going to, okay, going to send in some attacks. Sure. Sure. Drop you, drop you from 113 to 104. Yeah. Making some progress. Yeah. It's a, it's a pride thing, I guess. You want to you want him to be below triple digits when it's all said and done. Sure. Joseph's going to draw. This is now turn three. Uh, and it looks like Joseph had, will draw on the fifth turn and have one card left in his deck. Yeah. So Night Howler going to show up on the fifth turn. Uh, still no no source of, of trampling over. So yeah, Pat. Yeah. Giant guy attacks. Pat just says indestructible guy block. Just sips, all right, I'll take my 20 or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, Fleece Main Lion. I would love to know how much damage that Fleece Main Lion has taken this game. 
I mean, actually, probably not that many because we were trampling for most of the game. So it wouldn't surprise me if it was, you know, north of 40 or 50 points of damage. Sure. But, yep, just the same. Last, last draw step of the game for Pat McGregor. Finds Fleece Main Lion. Can just go monstrous, get another yeah, blocker. Why not? And we, we, we know actually what Joseph's going to draw. So all the cards are known at this point. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Pat would probably get this with a couple more turns if it drew to his natural conclusion. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. If, there were, if, if two more turns had happened, then yes, Pat was going to win. And, yep, yeah, going to pass it back. We are now on turn five. Joseph draws. You have a, a bestow of Night Howler number two incoming for like a million. And that will do it. Uh, Excruciatingly enough. Yeah, the old 0-0-0, or the yeah, 0 one all right, Pat McGregor Results. and Joseph Burns tied zero games to zero. Potentially a win in next round. Yeah, both Hopefully players. they don't run into the same matchup. <laughs> uh, I think Joseph is probably the only person in contention still playing CDC Whip. So, so Pat's safe. It is a slow burn. Yeah. Wow, is that deck a slow burn. Yeah. So, yeah, both of these players now in, in that tough spot where they can win and hope. Because, yes. because, of course, yeah, X1 and 1, most people with that record do make top 8. But ideally, you want to be drawing into it so that you know if it's safe or not. A lot of times, the players who make it to the last round with the X wins, one, win, one loss and one draw record are playing for ninth or 10th. Well,